For today's homework assignment, I thought I would uh, provide you with a little help on, uh, I've just selected four of the problems on page 411, so hopefully this uh, will help you with the rest of the assignment. Uh, let's start with something pretty simple, very much like we did in class today. Um, we're taking the parent function, y equals the square root of x, and I went ahead and made just, I didn't draw the whole curve, but I just made dots that I think would be helpful if you just use as a starting point. Uh, we looked at today in class how we got these four dots, and of course there are many more on this graph, but we'll just take these four and that will serve as our beginning point uh, for where we're going to translate or stretch or compress, which we'll talk about in just a minute. So starting with these four parent points. Uh, this tells me to take those points and move them five places up. Notice that the plus five is not under the radical. So every one of these red dots, I'm just going to go up five. And you can see the result. Um, you don't really have to have these as part of your homework answer, but it might help you in the beginning while you're just getting used to this to go ahead and show them as a reference point. So the blue actually represents the graph of y equals the square root of x plus 5, shifted up 5 units. Make sure I counted right. Okay, pretty simple. That's the answer for number 4. Okay, number 10. Um, this is a little different than what we did in class. The example that we did in class uh, was like this, and we illustrated what is known as vertical stretch, the number that was multiplied in front of the parent function, like we did in class, uh, caused our parent function to have a higher arch to it. So uh, vertical stretch is when the number is not a fraction, basically. Well, in this case, in number 10, we're multiplying by a, a decimal or a fraction. So what this results in is what's known as compression. So you can kind of guess if stretch causes our parent to either go higher, if it's this positive square root of x, or if it's the negative, then it would just cause it to go lower that would be stretch. A decimal is going to cause it to shrink or become closer to the x-axis. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. So I'm going to approach this um, in this way. The first thing I'm going to do is plot the points for the opposite, the parent. I just I think it's important if you can think about all of these graphs as modifications. Uh, transformations of a given parent function. So this particular parent, since it's negative, looks like this. And we talked about how the negative just flips over the x-axis. Okay, so by starting with these points, uh, I've basically uh, taken care of this negative. All right, so we talked earlier in class today how this number multiplies by just the y-coordinate only. Well, since I'm starting with these y-coordinates that are already negative, then I don't have to multiply by a negative number, so I don't, I don't want to get you confused here. Um, this parent function basically takes care of this. So I've taken care of the negative sign, now I'm just going to multiply each of the y-coordinates of this blue parent by 0.25. If you multiply by negative, that's, that's going to be a negative times a negative, which would be positive, and it would put your graph back up over the x-axis. But we know with it being a negative sign that the graph should be below. So I just want, didn't want you to be confused. Uh, by starting with these parent points like this, the minus sign has been taken care of. So you just need to focus on multiplying each of your parent points, the y-coordinates, by one-fourth. So I think I'll just show you 
All right, here's the parent, the coordinates of the parent that I have drawn. Okay. Now, what's the effect of, and I'll do this in a different color, this 0.25 times each of the y coordinates? <clears throat> well, that's going to mean, now remember, the, the x's are not affected, the x coordinates are not affected at all by multiplying by this 0.25. So 0 times 0.25 is still 0. Negative 1 times 0.25 is negative. 0.25. That's the same thing as negative one fourth. All right. So let's just plot um, negative one fourth. We'll just have to guess, estimate where we think it is. Okay. Now, when we multiply negative two times a fourth, that's negative a half. All right. So here we are at four, and then another halfway down. All right, and now we're down to 9, and if we multiply negative 3 times a fourth, of course, that's negative 3 fourths, or negative 0.75, and that's a little closer to negative 1. All right, so this red curve, and that's going to be tough for me to draw, be easier with pen or pencil, but uh, I'm not sure if I can do it. You get the idea, connecting those dots. And again, because we're multiplying by a decimal, our parent function was actually, it's, it's like it's shrinking it closer to the x-axis versus compression, multiplying by a whole number, making it further away from the x-axis. All right, so that's your answer for number 10. All right, number 18, uh, this is really three different things being done to the parent function y equals the square root of x, positive. So once again, I'm just going to put these parent points here as a reference, point of reference, something to start with. Don't have to do this, just suggestion. Uh, for some people, it helps to have something to look at. Okay, so there's really three things we're going to do, and, and you need to do them just left or right in the order that you see them. So uh, remember, multiplying by three, this is going to be stretch, because it's a, not a decimal, not a fraction. So we're going to multiply three times the y coordinate. All right, so let's see if we can just kind of think through this. The y coordinate of this first point here is zero. Well, 0 times 3 is still 0, so that's, that doesn't really have an effect on this point. Now I'm going to do the translation. This tells me to move one place to the left, so I've done that. And the other number says to move four places up. So what just happened is this point that was at the origin has been translated by what's in the given function. 1 left, 4 up, multiplying by 3 times the y coordinate didn't have any effect. Okay, now let's move over to this point, and we're going to do the same three things, starting with multiply. The y coordinate of this point is 1. Well, if I multiply 1 times 3, I get 3. So I'm going to think about going from y coordinate 1 to y coordinate 3. Okay, see that? So I'm just going to sit here for just a second. Now I'm going to do the translation. All right, so here I am at y equals 3, left 1, up 4. So now this point in the parent is this point in the blue function given in number 18. Okay, let's move over to this one. The y coordinate of this point is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. So I'm going to go up to where y is 6. It's very important that you don't think about going 6 more. Your thought is 2 times 3 is 6, y is 6. So 3, 4, 5, 6. Here's where y is 6. And now I'm going to go left 1, up 4. And looks like we've got one more. 
Here, y is 3. When I multiply 3 times 3, I get 9. So I'm going to go 2y equals 9. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Left 1, up 4. Okay? And those four dots need to be connected. And when you do that, you will have your answer to number 18. So I hope, I hope that makes sense how these three things need to be done, be done in this order. Only multiply the y coordinate by three. This is horizontal movement. This is vertical movement. Okay, I got one more for you. I went ahead and drew this uh, y equals the opposite of the square root of x, at least four of the points for it to use as a starting point. All right, so that takes care of this. Got the negative taken care of. And so uh, once again, it might be helpful since we're multiplying by 0.4. Let's just write down what these ordered pairs are. 4, negative 2, 9, negative 3. All right, so this says, and you might want a calculator for this one. Um, I probably wouldn't do this to you on a test, uh, but it's good practice. Um, not really anything different other than we're having to multiply the y's by 0.4. Okay, so remember, I've already done the negative because we're starting with these negative points. So that's already taken care of. Just kind of put that out of your mind. And now let's think about multiplying by 0.4. Well, 0 times 0.4 is two different color is still zero. So I'm still at zero, zero, multiplying by 0.4. But now we need to do the translation. Okay, so here I am at zero, zero, and this tells me to go right six and up seven. And that represents the first dot, first point of my new the answer to number 22. Okay, so now let's work on um, 1, negative 1. Okay, so if you multiply negative 1 times 0.4, you get negative Point four. Okay, now we're going to do the right six. So you might want to, uh, this gets a little complicated, but just think about it this way. Uh, picture this ordered pair going right six is the same thing as adding six to your x coordinate. All right, so here I am at one negative 0.4, which is almost a half, negative a half. All right, now I'm going to go right 6, and I'm going to go up 7. And that's a pretty rough estimate. Uh, should be uh, right there. So if you want to know ordered pairs, uh, this should be the ordered pair 7, 6.6. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's work on the next one. We know the... Uh, the effect of multiplying negative 2 times 0 0.4, if you do that in your calculator, 2 times 0 0.4 is 0.8, and it makes it negative 0.8. So once again, we're, we're just kind of guesstimating. So here we are at 4, and we're almost down to negative 1, negative 0.8. Okay, negative 0.8, we're right there, 
and then we're going to do the translation. Right 6 and up 7. And that should be a little closer to this red line here, which is 6. It's just a little bit above 6. To check your answer, uh, your ordered pair there should be 10, because we added 6 to 4. And then we added 7 to negative 0.8, and we should get 6.2. Just a little bit above 6. This is about halfway a little bit more than halfway. So you can kind of see where we're headed there. All right, we got one more. So let's multiply negative 3 times 0.4. Negative 3 times 0.4 should be negative 1.2. Okay, and now we'll do the translation. So here we are at 9, and down 1, and then just a little bit more. You can kind of estimate where you think 0.2 is, just a little bit below negative 1. And I'm going to run off the grid, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and go right 6, and we'll say that I'm here, and then up 7. roughly there. Okay, so that's a pretty rough sketch of number 22, and if you want to check ordered pairs, that should be the point 15 and 5.8. We added 6 to 9, that's the right 6, and we added 7 to negative 1.2 and that should be 5.8. Okay, so uh, just taking a look here, making sure there's 10, 2, 4, 6, and then just a little bit more. All right, so we're looking good. So I hope that helps, and uh, the rest of them uh, I think should be a little bit easier. I, I tried to pick some that were a little bit uh, odd, uh, different than what we did in class, so um, I hope that helps you out. If you need help, just contact me or see me in academic support.